Hello, and welcome to Deep versus Shallow Copies in Python. I'm Joseph, or maybe an AI copy of someone named Joseph, and I'll be your instructor for this video course. Copying objects in Python. It sounds straightforward, but there's more to it than you might think. As humans, we have certain intuitions around making copies of things in the physical world. You know what to expect when you use a Xerox machine to copy a document, or take a photograph to copy an image, or use a 3D printer to make realistic, non-copyright infringing miniatures for your favorite tabletop role-playing game. The thing that these copies have in common is that they have no way to affect the originals. In programming, however, copying an object does not necessarily have that guarantee. Because of the complexity of some objects in Python, you can actually end up creating copies of objects that are still linked to the originals in subtle ways. And this can lead to producing equally subtle bugs. What it often comes down to is whether you're dealing with deep or shallow copies. Throughout this course, you'll learn various techniques for copying objects in Python, the differences between shallow and deep copying, how to distinguish between references and values, the benefits of Python's built-in copy module, and ways to fine-tune the copy behavior of your own custom classes. This course is focused on copying in depth, so we expect you to have some familiarity with intermediate Python concepts, like Python data structures, such as lists and dictionaries, functions, classes and instances, as well as methods and attributes. Essentially, object-oriented programming in Python. If you feel like you need a refresher, I recommend the tutorial Object-Oriented Programming in Python. Otherwise, meet me in the next lesson where we'll discuss some of the theory behind copying objects in Python. Before getting to the main course of copying objects in Python, this lesson serves as kind of an appetizer. First off, you should consider some motivations for object copying. Then, what are the characteristics of these Python objects you'll be copying? And key to understanding copying, how does Python handle references and values? So what is object copying? Copying an object creates a duplicate of that object in memory, and crucially, allows you to modify both objects independently of one another. So what? Why would I want to do that? You ask. Well, while far from an exhaustive list, here are a few of the reasons you might want to copy an object. Protecting sensitive data from modification. For example, a class that represents a bank account would do well to provide access to copies of its data, like the account balance, and not allow direct access and potential mutation. Creating new objects based on an existing object. If you needed to modify an object while still retaining the original for comparison, for example. Sharing data across multiple processes. If you're working with concurrency in multiple processes, you often want each process to have its own copy of whatever data they need to access. And these are just a few of the ways it can be useful to work with copies instead of originals. Let's also talk about the characteristics of Python objects. In the context of copying, there are a couple really important distinctions between different types of objects in Python. The first is they can be scalar or composite. Scalar data types represent indivisible atomic values. You can't break them down into constituent parts. On the other hand, composite data types are containers made up of other elements, and their members can themselves also be scalar or composite, which allows for a kind of nesting to exist. The second distinction is that objects can be mutable or immutable. Mutable objects can be altered after creation. For example, lists, which support adding and removing elements. Immutable objects are unchangeable and read-only once defined, like tuples, which are fixed and can't be modified. And it's important to note that these characteristics are unconnected to each other. You can think of them as existing on separate axes. See this table for a few examples of the different types found in each category. There are no built-in types that are both mutable and scalar, which makes sense. You can, however, theoretically implement your own. For immutable scalar types, you can look to the int, float, and boolean types, among many others. Examples of mutable, that is changeable, composite types include the list, set, and the dict types, all of which can have elements added or removed after you create them. To see cases of composite and immutable objects, look at the tuple and frozen set types, both of which cannot be modified after creation. I'll also ask you to note that these distinctions are not always clear cut. 
For example, in some cases, the string data type behaves as an indivisible scalar, but in other cases, it behaves as a composite list of characters. There is much more to discuss about mutability and immutability, but in another course. Which course? Well, I recommend differences between Python's mutable and immutable types. But for this lesson, one more thing. References versus values. In programming, it's important to distinguish between references and values. Values are actual data stored in memory, and they can be scalar or composite. References are memory addresses pointing to stored values. Some operations will work with values, while other operations will work with references. This will be especially key when we get to discussing shallow and deep copies. And in Python specifically, variables are references to objects and not containers that hold values. The assignment operation does not copy data. Instead, it binds a name to an existing object, like adding a label. And multiple labels can be associated with the same object in memory. And in that case, it makes them aliases, not copies of that object. Pop open the REPL and let's take a look at an example of this. Start by creating a mutable composite object, a list, holding the integers one through four. Numbers equals one, two, three, four. Then create a new variable called digits and assign numbers to it. Digits equals numbers. Examine digits. The list one, two, three, four. So now you have two variables, digits and numbers. They may appear to be copies, but they're actually aliases of each other. How can you tell? Use the is operator to compare their identities. Is will return true if both its operands refer to the same object. Digits is numbers returns true, so they share an identity. What does this mean? Go ahead and modify digits. Set the first element to zero using assignment. Digits at index zero equals zero. Look at digits again. 0, 2, 3, 4. Now look at numbers. Also 0, 2, 3, 4. See? Modifying digits also modified numbers because they both reference the same object. One more way to verify this is using the built-in ID function, which returns a unique integer for any given object in memory. ID digits, ID numbers. The numbers you see will probably be different from the numbers on my screen. But the numbers themselves don't matter. What's important is that the two numbers are the same. In this case, they are, which means digits and numbers, again, reference the same object. So if your goal is to make copies, this is not very useful, is it? To see how to make an actual copy, follow me to the next lesson. As your introduction to copying, you'll start by working with shallow copies. Shallow copying creates new objects, but doesn't duplicate the contents of composite objects. Instead, it copies references to them. Objects created by shallow copying are new objects distinct from the original. However, they will share references to contained or nested objects. And that's not a big deal when those objects are immutable. But if not, this can cause side effects if those shared objects are mutated. In other words, operations on the copied object can have an effect on the original. Let's examine how all this works in the REPL. There are many ways to create shallow copies in Python, but for this lesson, you'll work with the copy function from the built-in copy module. And for clarity, import it using the alias shallow copy. From copy, import copy as shallow copy. And to make displaying objects a little bit nicer, import the pp function from the pprint module. It's a kind of pretty printer. From pprint, import pp. And since we're all grown-ups here, I trust that there's nothing even remotely humorous about the name of this function. Thank you. So what are you going to copy? To understand shallow copying, a mutable composite data type is perfect. In this case, a dictionary, holding some inventory information for an imaginary grocery store. Inventory is a dictionary with two keys. The key fruits holds a dictionary with the key value pairs apple and the integer 50 and banana and the integer 30. The key dairy also holds a dictionary with two key value pairs, the key cheese and the value 15, and the key milk with the value 20. Now create a backup of inventory using the shallow copy function. Backup equals shallow copy inventory. 
Use the pp function to print both backup and inventory, passing in the keyword argument with equals 50. Again, this is just for readability, so you could also use the regular print function. pp backup with equals 50. pp inventory with equals 50. And they appear to be exactly the same. If you have doubts about the type of backup, you can use the built-in type function just to confirm that it is a dict. Type backup, class dict, perfect. And now you can even use the equality operator to compare if the two dictionaries are in fact equivalent. Backup equals equals inventory evaluates to true. And the final test, are they different objects? Use the is operator to see. Backup is inventory returns false. Perfect. Backup is a new, separate object from inventory. You can further prove this by mutating inventory. Add a new category, seafood. Inventory at the key seafood equals a dictionary holding the key value pairs of shrimp 12, salmon 10, and tuna 8. Pretty print inventory and backup setting depth to 1. This will hide the contents of the nested dictionary, so it's a bit easier to read. PP inventory, depth equals one. PP backup, depth equals one. And you can see inventory has the new key of seafood, but backup does not. So far, they seem to be very separate objects. But here's where things get tricky. What if you modify one of the nested dictionaries inside inventory? Create a new key in inventory's fruits dictionary called orange and set its value to 40. Inventory at the key fruits at the key orange equals 40. Examine inventory at fruits. And you should see the keys apple, banana, and orange. Then examine backup at the key fruits. And you will also see the keys apple, banana, and orange. What happened? Modifying the fruits dict within inventory also modified the fruits dict within backup. Why? Because shallow copy only copies references to nested objects and not the values those references point to. You've already used the is operator to confirm that backup and inventory are distinct objects. But what about the objects inside them? Compare the fruits dictionaries. Backup at key fruits is inventory at key fruits. This returns true, meaning they are the same object. Any changes will affect both. Comparing with the ID function yields the same result. ID backup at the key fruits equals equals ID inventory at the key fruits. Also returns true. So while shallow copying does create a new object, it has clear limitations. What if you want to create a complete copy of an object and all of its contents? Up next, Deep copying. Unlike shallow copying, deep copying recursively copies objects, and this ensures full independence from the source. Deep copies are new objects distinct from the original. They contain copies of nested objects, not just references. As a result, they have no shared references with the original object and can be modified with no risk of causing side effects. Once again, we go to the REPL to see some examples. The main way to create deep copies in Python is using the deep copy function from the built-in copy module. From copy, import deep copy. Start with the same inventory dictionary from the previous lesson. Inventory, again, is a dictionary with two keys, fruits and dairy. Fruits holds a dictionary with the key value pairs apple 50 and banana 30. Dairy holds a dictionary with the pairs cheese 15 and milk 20. This time, create a backup using the deep copy function. Backup equals deep copy inventory. Use equality to see that right now their contents are equal. And use the is operator to see that the objects are different. Equality is true and identity is false, which is just what you're looking for for a copy. Next, jump straight to mutating one of the inner dictionaries. Add the key orange to the fruits dictionary and set its value to 40. Inventory at the key fruits at the key orange equals 40. 
examine inventory at the key fruits. And you see the keys apple, banana, and orange. And examine backup at the key fruits. Apple, banana, and no orange. Not only are the objects distinct, but so are the nested objects. For one more piece of evidence, compare the dairy dictionaries of inventory and backup using the is operator. Inventory at the key dairy, is backup at the key dairy, returns false. They have no connection to each other. At this point, you're probably thinking, well then, shouldn't I just use deep copy for everything? The thing is, creating copies of all these objects isn't free. There's extra overhead in terms of computation and memory usage. For this reason, if the descendants of the top-level object you're copying are themselves immutable, a shallow copy is actually the preferred choice. See this example. Import copy from the copy module once again as shallow copy. From copy, import copy as shallow copy. Create a list of two strings, milk and eggs, and call it cart. Cart equals the list milk eggs. Create a shallow copy of cart called basket. Basket equals shallow copy cart. As a shallow copy, the two lists are distinct objects, but is there a risk of side effects? Well, think about what kind of changes you can make to cart. You could add an item, right? Try cart.append the string bananas. But what else can you do? Can you mutate any of the existing items? Well, strings are immutable, but they do support augmented assignment, allowing you to add to an existing string. So try this. Cart at index 0 plus equals the string chocolate, with a space at the beginning. Now look at cart. Cart contains the strings milk chocolate, eggs, and bananas. Look back at basket. Just like it began, basket only holds the strings milk and eggs. See? No side effects. The append operation only affected the top-level object, cart, which was already distinct from basket. And the augmented addition of chocolate to milk didn't actually mutate the underlying object, but instead replaced it with a new object. And that is what took the first place position in the list cart, leaving basket and the original string as they were. So in a situation like this, deep copy would have been overkill. All right. Up to this point, you've done all your copying using the copy module. In the next lesson, we'll explore the myriad other options Python offers for producing copies.